Hello, I'm Bruce Yanny, and today in Homemade Science, we're going to take a closer look at the physics of the upside down water glass experiment. Now, in a previous video, I showed some variations that you could try. We can do it in very small containers, or very large containers. We were successful with very long cylinders, containers with openings on every surface, better ways to seal the bottom. and some tricks that you can try. <laughs> now this demonstration depends on a few key concepts to be successful. It starts with cohesive forces holding the molecules of water together. Under normal conditions, water is said to be incompressible. So when we have it in a container, we can't change its volume. While gases are easy to compress or let them expand. Another concept involved would be atmospheric pressure. For example, when we use a straw, the pressure inside is reduced and the atmosphere pushes water up to try and balance it out. With the top sealed, that area continues to have reduced pressure. I can do the same thing on a larger scale by reducing the pressure at the top of the tube. <laughs> the water remains trapped inside due to the reduction at the top. We can observe that change with this homemade pressure gauge. Let's see what it shows us on this tube that's five inches long. When I remove it from the bucket and cap it, we do see a slight reduction in pressure. The actual change might be easier to see when the water is released from the container. The gauge goes back to normal pressure inside and out. Let's try it on a tube that's 10 inches long. It looks like the gauge marker moved twice as far on the pressure reduction side. Now let's try some cylinders that are even longer. This tube's 22 inches long and the marker moves about four and a half times further than the first one. This last one's about 33 inches long. It looks like the pressure change is about seven times as much as the first one. Now this demonstration can also be done in a much narrower tube. Both of these are the same length, but not the same volume. Which one do you think is going to have a greater reduction in pressure? This narrow tube also shows almost a full-scale reading on the pressure gauge. Now if I go back and compare it to the much larger tube, I find the readings are almost identical. So this means the amount of reduction is determined by the height of the water column, not the amount of water in the tube. Of course, there is a way that you could test this for yourself. Simply stretch a balloon across the top end of the cylinder. The balloon will have a concave surface as the tube is lifted up and then covered at the bottom. When the water is released at the bottom, the balloon returns to a flat surface. When I try it with the longer tube, the reduction in pressure increases, so the indentation is more pronounced. So now that we know about the pressure at the top of the container, I had several people question me about the pressure throughout the rest of it. Now to find out, we could try the pressure gauge at these different locations. I'll try it first at the top of the tube. The pressure is reduced by about six and a half lines on the scale. 
This location reduces it by about five and a half lines. At this spot, it's only three and a half lines. And here at the lowest level, it's only reduced by one line. So the greatest reduction is at the top and the pressure increases as we go towards the bottom. The next question is, how much pressure does the water actually exert against this bottom plate? I addressed this in a previous video. According to information that I found on another website, I stated that water is pushing down against the bottom lid. As the height of the column increases, the weight of the water increases against the bottom cover. Something didn't seem right about this, so I decided to check it with the pressure gauge and see if I could verify the results. I was surprised I didn't see any change at all, even when I held the tube at various heights. Let's see what happens if I take the top off. By letting the pressure equalize at the top of the container, now we're seeing a higher hydrostatic pressure. Now another way to see what's going on is to replace this bottom lid with a balloon. It looks like it's just flat across the bottom. Now let's see what happens if I let some air into the top. Now we can see that the water does actually push against the surface, as its weight causes it to bow outwards. Let's try it again with a 22 inch tube. The additional water weight stretches the balloon a bit further than the previous one. Let's try it with the 33 inch tube. Once again, we see a flat surface across the bottom. Now let's see what happens if I open the top up to the atmosphere. If I submerge it, I should be able to fill the tube back up with water. I'll seal it. It doesn't look like the weight of the water is pushing against the bottom until I let the pressure equalize at the top. One more time. Now, going back to the upside down water glass experiment, it looks like I'd have to make some changes. The weight of the water causes a reduction in pressure at the top of the container, and it's the height of the column that determines how much the pressure is reduced. However, at the bottom of the container, the pressure is just slightly less than the atmosphere, just enough to hold the lid in place, and it blocks air from getting inside the container. Water held captive in a straw exhibits the same behavior. You put your finger at the top to seal it, and surface tension blocks the air from going up the tube and letting the water out. We can even do this demonstration with a screen. Surface tension and adhesive forces is enough to keep the water inside the container. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if there's a lesson here, it's always check your sources and test things for yourself. Okay, thanks for watching. I can even flip it up in the air. Oops. What the?